Hey everybody, this is Scott from Link ECU. Some of you may have seen or heard that we just released the new 7-inch dash, the AIM MXG 1.2 Strata. And if you've ever wondered how to hook these up and make them work, stay tuned. Because in this video, we're going to check out the new dash. I'm going to cover step-by-step -step everything you need to do to hook it up and make it work. And at the end, we're going to cover a couple tricks on how to customize some stuff. So, without further ado, let's open this guy up and get going. One question we get asked quite a bit is, what's the difference between your dash and the AIM version of the dash? And uh, there are three significant differences, first being the box. The Link version of the dash comes in a Link branded box. The AIM version would come in a AIM branded box. Uh, second difference is, the Link version comes with a Link logo on the bezel. The AIM version would come with a AIM logo on the bezel. And the third difference is the LINK version is going to come preloaded to accept the LINK ECU CAN stream. So once you hook this up, technically there's no setup required on the dash side. We tell PC LINK that the dash is there. Magic happens. So opening this up, we got an AIM software disk. We got some link stickers, link to download the AIM user guide, and some setup instructions that I highly recommend everybody read and follow because if you do, you're not going to have any issues getting this up and running. And there we have it, 7 inch AIM MXG 1.2 Strata. Right off the bat, you can see not just display area, but overall footprint is significantly bigger. On the sides, we got the same buttons. On the back, we have the same connectors, same inputs and outputs. And on that note, it is worth mentioning that these dashes um, you can use as sensor hubs. If you're in a situation where you're out of inputs on your ECU, you can wire sensors directly to these dashes and by CAN they will transmit the sensor data back to the ECU. You could do stuff like EGTs, pressure sensors, a digital switch to change boost modes. It's entirely up to you, but these dashes do transmit as, as well as receive and uh, sky's the limit for what you can do. Got some foam down here, another box. It's going to have our USB communication cable, a plug and pin kit for the additional sensors. And this is going to be the primary harness that we're going to need four wires off of to make magic happen. So there is only four wires that we need to make a connection for to make these dashes work. And those four wires are power, ground, can high, can low. Uh, power is red. This is going to be switch 12 volts. Uh, the only tricky thing I can tell you is you want a clean switched 12 volt source so you're not going to want to tap into like your fuel pump relay for example with 20 amps of noisy fuel pump on it you're going to want something low noise low amperage switch 12 volts black is going to be our ground ideally go back to the battery whatever you do do not ground it to the screw on your plastic dashboard or your plastic shifter housing. You're going to get further down the road and end up back at square one anyway. Can high and can low. Can high is white, like clouds, high in the sky. Can low is blue, like the ocean, I suppose. Because you can't go lower unless you go underwater. And how you connect these to the ECU is going to depend on which type of ECU you have. If you've got one of our wiring ECUs like the Adam or Monsoon, 
the can wires are on the main ECU header itself. Uh, pins 28 and 29 is what you're going to want to connect can high and can low to. And after that you're done. On ECUs like the Storm, Extreme, or Fury, your CAN2 ports is on the B-plug, uh, pins 27 and 28. Alternatively, CAN1 is on the round port underneath the communication port. And on a plug-in ECU, we typically have two CAN ports. Uh, this example has CAN1 and CAN2 right there. And we're going to need a CAN PCB connector to make the connection to those pins. So everybody with a plug-in, you're going to want a CAN PCB connector. Five pin connector. That will plug into this socket. And this is what you'll use to connect any CAN based device from here on out, be it a dash, uh, CAN lambda, EGTs, anything CAN based is now going to go through CAN high and low on this port. Now wire and end plug in guys, from here you're going to want a CAN F plug. And this plug will go into this port on a wire in or alternatively to your CAN PCB cable on a plug-in. From there, CAN high and low will get soldered to your CAN F plug. And that's it. My friend Sean's going to demonstrate how to solder a CAN F plug. What he's doing right here is tinning the tips of the wires or priming the tips of the wires with solder so that solder's already on them when he puts them in the CAN F plug cups. So he's got some solder on the soldering iron. He just brushes the tip of the wires and gets a little bit of solder onto the end of the wires. From there, and places them in the appropriate cups. With the hot soldering iron, you just touch the back of the cups and it's attached. It's good to have a little bit of solder on the soldering iron. So Sean's going to get a little bit more on the tip. Touches the back of can high here. And that, my friends, is it. And that is can high and can low soldered to a can off plug. From there, we will attach the back half of the plug and seal up the weather seal. And with that, we're ready to put it in a car. So now we're on to software. And on the link side of things, it couldn't be easier. I'm connected to my ECU. I'm going to go over to ECU controls, CAN setup. Now I have my dash on CAN port 1. So we're going to set that to user defined. Make sure this is set to 1 megabyte per second. Channel 1. We're going to come down here, find my link aim, MXS dash stream. Make sure my ID is set to 1000. Transmit rate set to 20 hertz. Click apply, click OK. I click F4 to store. Now that you have your dash up and running, there's probably a few things you want to change or customize on it. So once you've downloaded the AIM Ray Studio 3 software, you'll want to connect the USB cable from your dash to the laptop. And with the dash powered up, you'll see the model of your dash down here. Once the ECU recognizes your dash, click on a collection, click on receive, and now the software is going to extract the configuration file from the dash. From here, 
we can open the configuration and start customizing. Real quick, uh, this button here is going to take you to unit preferences and this tab here is where you can drill down into which parameters actually use which unit and also how many decimal places you want to view for each parameter. So you can go down the list of ECU parameters and customize everything the way that you want to view it. And to actually change what you see on the dash, you'll want to click on this display tab. This is where you can add pages, delete pages, and customize everything on the pages. So for example, if I want my gears to be indicated in red, we can click on that and instead of ECT I actually want it to say engine temp so now it says engine temp like I like it to and uh, you can also do things like uh, give some attention to air fuel ratio and change the parameters however you'd like. Uh, if you don't want to see ECU fault codes, you can go into the ECU stream, pick anything from the list that you'd rather see on there. Um, knock level, for example. And now we have knock level in that window. If I want to see knock in blue, now we have knock in blue. So once you make your pages, customize your pages, get everything exactly the way you want, you'll want to save your configuration file and then transmit your configuration file to the dash. You'll see the little status bar go through. The dash power will cycle by itself and once your dash restarts, everything that you've customized will be on your display. And of course, all this is just scratching the surface. So if you need more help, you can hop on the website. We've got a live chat there. We've got Facebook, tech at linkecu.com. Regionally, you can give us all a call. And that's my Dash video. So I hope it helps somebody. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.